And so uh, now I'm going to talk about and focus first on the general strategies on how do we overcome um, resistance in certain pathways. Uh, my talk will mostly be focused on EGFR and ALK because that's where we have the majority of the data currently, but I will also try to cover some of the other mutations, the rarer uh, mutations in the, in the last few slides. So the snippet here, usually, uh, you know, really illustrates, I think, the point that we were also trying to make in the morning session. Um, you know, so when we have a patient, uh, especially when we, when I'm thinking about the the subtype of oncogene-driven metastatic non-small cell lung cancer, who is responding to the first line treatment, uh, I think the progression can be classified into you know three different uh, types. Essentially, there is one being systemic progression. So there's a multi-site progression involving uh, either previously responsive sites and perhaps you know some new additional sites of tumor. There is oligo progression, which I think Dr. Anger covered you know elegantly in the in the morning session, talking about the the you know the differences. Also, I mean the definition currently is not a standard definition, but for the purpose of this talk, I'll kind of you know think about limited sites, maybe three to four, amenable to local therapy. And then there is also CNS only oligo progression, which I think we touched upon in the Q and A session. Um, However, I will mention that with the with the frontline therapies now being mostly next generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors, I think uh, thankfully we are seeing less of CNS only progression, especially in the oncogenic driven subsets. However, I think uh, oligo progression and systemic progression still remain very relevant and and difficult uh, uh, issues to treat. So, focusing first on oligo progression, I think we heard um, that perhaps. Um, radiation to uh, as a as a local therapy uh, as well as maybe surgery uh, may be helpful um, and enable us to continue the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, the frontline therapies that we have patients on while trying to eradicate some of these oligometastatic sites. Now, there is some data that is emerging specifically for oncogenic-driven uh, non-small cell lung cancer using local therapy. Uh, there is this retrospective case series uh, about 38 patients uh, with ALK and ROS positive metastatic non-small cell lung cancer who were continued on crizotinib beyond radiologic progression. And it, it was shown that patients who did receive any, any sort of local therapy, mostly radiation in this case, uh, did have a prolonged PF, PFS2, which is defined as time from initial imaging evidence of progression, progressive disease to terminating um, the usage of their frontline therapy. So essentially trying to increase the mileage you can gain from the frontline therapy by using local therapy for oligometastatic disease. <clears throat> More recently, the CURB trial was presented. So this uh, trial um, essentially included patients both with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer and breast cancer. And then uh, they were subsequently randomized to receiving standard of care without any radiation and standard of care therapy with radiation to all progressive sites. And here, just focusing on the on the subset of patients with lung cancer, uh, there was the benefit of uh, radiation with increasing the median progression-free survival uh, which you know I would think about as a progression of the cancer while being on the treatment um, compared to not receiving radiation. So patients who did receive radiation have a, had a longer progression-free survival and enjoyed longer time uh, free of progression essentially from the cancer compared to um, compared to nine weeks without radiation therapy. Uh, one caveat though is this this trial particularly had uh, about 86% of the patients did not have any driver mutations so only 14% of the patients uh, are kind of uh, you know that's the relevance for particularly in the oncogen driver subset but i think there is emerging data and i think currently in clinical practice i think i have seen many physicians do um, use that strategy where they are trying to locally target the oligoprogressive sites while trying to still continue the frontline therapy, especially if the patients have had good response. Um, you know, the tumors have had good response for uh, this particular um, oncogene driver uh, tumors. So when we talk about uh, mechanisms and how to overcome, uh, you know, systemic progression, I think it, it becomes very important to molecularly analyze either through CT DNA or tissue specimen uh, from the primary tumor that what kind of um, resistant mechanisms are we dealing with? If there is a targetable resistant mutation, then perhaps we should target that. And if, uh, you know, either through CT DNA or tissue rebiopsy, we identify 
something that is unknown or where we do not currently have targeted treatment, then potentially offer other benefits that other therapies that may benefit uh, for those markers or best supportive care. And so really, I, I'm kind of thinking of this as, you know, precision oncology 2.0 there, where initially in our first line treatments, we're all already doing, uh, you know, matching the treatments to the mutations that we find in the tumor. So perhaps even in the second line, we need to do that when we see the progression of these uh, tumors, uh, we need to identify the resistant mechanisms and again, kind of tailor treatments based on that. And so, um, you know, there are various types of approaches that we are taking currently. So just kind of going by the different categories that we know of today. So for particularly when we see mutations in the drug target, I think um, cer certain mechanisms and strategies are to either administer next generation TKIs or PROTAX, which are protein uh, proteolysis targeting antigen chimeras. Essentially, these are molecules which uh, bind to the target oncogene driver and on the other end, bind to the proteasome and cause proteasomal degradation uh, of these oncogenic dri uh, driven tumors. Um, then I talked about bypass signaling as one of the resistance mechanisms, and really we can target this by either combination of uh, different tyrosine kinase inhibitors, depending on what pathway is activated, or antibody drug conjugates, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of these strategies. Uh, when we talk about mutations in downstream effectors, uh, we perhaps need uh, selective inhibitors of these downstream effectors, as well as combination TKIs. Um, and then for histologic transformation, um, you know, our current strategies include using chemotherapy or immunotherapy for targeting small cell and squamous cell lung cancer.